All right, Mr. Tilson, good morning. How are you, sir? The honey wash day. Good morning. I'm good. Wonderful. That We're glad to hear it. And of course, it's a pleasure to have you on uh, today. So why don't you give us a good description of what's around you? Oh, uh, you mean just like today? Yeah. Where are you at? Yeah. What's the weather like? How are you doing? Also, I'm up here in the beautiful, the beautiful um, Chesapa, the Black Hills. Um, I'm sitting in my, sit in my truck with a with a with a bunch of lumber sitting on the back. Um, and we we actually established something called Camp Mini Luzaha up here in the Black Hills. Uh, Mini Mini Luzaha is our word for Rapid City and our word for Swift Water and Lakota. And uh, we developed Camp Mini Luzaha to provide shelter for houseless relatives. Um, and so I got a. I got a whole team of, uh, of uh, carpenters waiting for me at the camp and a whole bunch of lumber in the back, and I'm on my way over there, and that's kind of what I'm around. It's beautiful today. It's like 70, 72 degrees, 73 degrees up here in the Black Hills of South Dakota, uh, but we're on a mad dash to winterize this camp before snow hits on Sunday. Oh, yeah, I can certainly imagine, but, of course, we're glad to have you for the time that we um, have you, and we don't want to hold you up any, so, yeah, we'll get right into it. Um, yeah, so for a lot of folks who may not be uh, too aware of who you are, why don't you provide us a quick background and just talk a little bit about your life growing up and what inspired you or what really ignited your passion for the work that you do today? Yeah, a little bit of background, you know, I um, my... Uh, my, uh, I'm, I'm Oglala Lakota on my mom's side of the family from the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation and, and uh, uh, Jewish on my father's side uh, from the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. And, uh, and sort of yeah, my family history and kind of growing up a little bit was that my, my grandfather was a civil rights attorney and he represented the American Indian movement in sort of its early days of becoming an organization and, and a movement on the streets of Minneapolis against police brutality against Indian people. Um, and then my mom, my, my mom, Joanne Tall, um, she is part of the grassroots um, of a lot of Lakota people on Pine Ridge who were um, organizing in the 1970s to hold on to our ceremonies and revitalize our language and protect the environment from stuff like uranium and, um, you know, development. And so, um, you know, my my parents met in the midst of Wounded Knee in 1973 on the, the siege occupation at Wounded Knee. And so I was kind of raised up through the American Indian movement, raised up through, um, you know, organizing. My parents went on to actually found uh, Keeley Radio Station, which was one of the first uh, Native-owned and operated public radio stations in America. And, uh, you know, the stuff that inspires my work today is, you know, and I got to be part of a movement on Pine Ridge and like, you know, probably a good, you know, in the early 2000s about reconnecting a lot of young people to culture and spirituality um, through the through the Sundance, and through the ceremonies. And um, and then a whole group of us started becoming, you know, young parents in our early 20s. And we, we were asking ourselves, hey, what can we do to improve the quality of life for for you know, for our people, because um, if we wait for everybody, then uh, you know we we'll be waiting forever. <laughs> and so, uh, and so, our you know we came together and actually founded something called the Thunder Valley Community Development Corporation up there on Pine Ridge. Um, and uh, you know, I, I served as the executive director for that for about twelve years. Um, you know, doing sustainable development work and community planning and affordable housing and food sovereignty work and language revitalization work and, and built that organization up. And then, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, you know, two, 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 two and a half years ago, I transitioned out of my role at the Thunder Valley Community Development Corporation and founded a new organization called Indian Collective, um, or Indian people say Indian Collective. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and the whole purpose of the Indian Collective is to build a collective power of indigenous people by investing into indigenous self-determination and doing that work in the areas of defend, develop, and decolonize. Um, so we do everything from community organizing to community developing, to grant making, to, to lending, um, and to building campaigns that help push the dial for, for Indian people. And at the end of the day, Indian Collective wanted to change the conditions in which indigenous leadership 
and self-determination is invested into. And so that is the that is the heart and soul of our work now because, and, and, I, and I shifted to that because when I was at Thunder Valley, I was just really focused on my own, my own community. And I, um, all these different tribes, over like 43 different tribes and 27 different native nonprofits coming from over, I don't know, 70 or so different indigenous communities who are saying, hey, we want to, you know, do something similar to what we, what you're doing, but within the context of our own culture and climate and spirit of place. Um, and so, you know, I sort of went to the drawing board and was like, well, first of all, we're barely pulling this idea off. <laughs> um, but uh, I kind of went to the drawing board and said, what would it look like for Indigenous people to be invested in an early stage into in the form of grants and loans and how did how does community organizing and policy and activism also help uh, you know perpetuate that and, and, and help build power in that way too wonderful yeah so as a national organization what are your observations in terms of the issues that you see and kind of what really um, brings indian country together toward uh toward all of your solutions I mean, I think one of the biggest things is land. I mean, I think that when we think about what what hits to the heart and the mind of every indigenous person everywhere, regardless of their conservative or progressive, you know, is land. Every Indian everywhere, you know, whether your grandpa is a medicine man or a cowboy or both, <laughs> um, you know, every indigenous person there's this connection to land that it's not just about physical land and it's not even just about physical ownership of land but it's about um, reconnecting um to a lot of things that were taken through through our people throughout colonization and so you know that's why you know, that's why we launched this movement called the land back movement in the, in the land back campaign um is to is to is to re is to create a national campaign that Indian people everywhere can buy into, and and to not only reconnect our um, our, our, our our culture and spirituality back to the land, but also our food systems and our economies and the things that were attacked at, as colonization happened to our people. They attacked our economies. They attacked our food source. They attacked the spirit of our people. And so Land Back is a movement about reconnecting to those things and re reestablishing that relationship with Unchi Maka or land. Um, but we also have to understand that in order for us to do that, we are going to have to disrupt the status quo. We cannot ask for permission every single time as Indian people that we want our land back. We have to take it and we have to pre apply pressure and we have to be aggressive in the efforts um, otherwise, we're going to be, you know, asking for permission forever um, to utilize our land and jumping through every hoop that the USDA has. And most of these colonial constructs that were actually created for the purpose of preventing us from having access to our land. And so, you know, this campaign is about that reconnection. It's also about dismantling some of those systems and barriers that have been in place to our people. Um, and so... Yeah, and it's a continuation on in many ways. Um, and, and to me, at the end of the day, I believe in the spirit of Indian people that the solutions already exist amongst our communities and our people, and they actually just need to be invested into. And that's why all of our work is we only invest into Indigenous-led efforts you know, that are led by Indigenous people, not in Indigenous-serving organizations, but Indigenous work that is being led by tribes and organizations in their own communities. Excellent, excellent stuff there, and I know that's going to certainly be a, a very impactful uh, cause that, that you're leading, and I know you'll be successful, and of course, we, we wish you the best in that endeavor, but before we uh, go any further, I should say, without saying too much, given that you are going to be one of our highlighted keynote speakers for, the, uh, for our annual conference, uh, what can folks expect to hear? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, not to spoil you know, spoil anything, but I mean, I think I'm gonna. I mean, the idea is to try to connect with people. You know, I'm just a Indian boy from Pine Ridge who wanted to make a difference. You know, and and I think that uh, 
Uh, so I want to share part of my own personal story and journey to, to, to creating difference and, and also some like ups and downs in that because we tend to just tell the good things as opposed to tell the hard things, the things that the, the struggles that we actually went through to get to where we needed to get to. And so I think sharing some of that stuff too is really helpful because I think that um, it's a way to it's a way to connect to people because we all have those struggles as Indian people, and it, it, it humanizes our connection to each other when we're able to share that stuff. So I'm going to share some of that. I'm going to share sort of like the journey of like how activism has thread throughout my career, throughout my life, but how I could both be a frontline activist, but also you know be working on systemic issues like education and community development and housing and all of these other things that we're that we're fighting for um and and then trying to really connect the struggles that are happening today to the struggles that in the place that this country is at um you know we're at a crossroads in this country and in this nation and it taught sort of how indian people and in our struggle threads that together and how this country cannot really continue without its relationship with indigenous people and how it's actually, I look at it as an opportunity for our people to galvanize change forward. So that's a little bit what we're talking about. And we're going to talk about the land back movement, the land back campaign, um, how people could get involved, um, leave some rooms for, for questions and answers. Um, and hopefully if the technology works out, we're going to share a couple you know, dynamite videos that are snippets uh, of our work um, and all of that stuff too. Oh, absolutely. And I'm, you know, certainly nothing short of um, inspiring and, and thought provoking for sure. And we look forward to it. And I know everyone watching and listening out there will look forward to it as well. Uh, man, thank you so much for joining us once again. We, we hope you have a, a great rest of your day and we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Absolutely. Looking forward, looking forward to it. Thanks for having me. And we'll see everybody here in, a, uh, in, a, in about a month or so. Yeah, absolutely. Nick Tilson, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Take care.